Okay, welcome everybody to what is now part six of the Terrestrial Escape Rocket Project. Today we're going to go over the construction of one of the key components for your motor build, and that would be your electric igniter. What you'll need is just a few components to get that ready. Uh, you're going to need some steel wool, you can get that from a hardware store. Uh, speaker wire, that can be found anywhere, Walmart, hardware store as well. You're going to need a sipping straw. Uh, the tooling you'll need is you'll need some uh, pair of shears, a utility knife, you're going to need a tape measure, a power source, and last but not least, you're going to need your igniter mix. And this is the same chemical mixture of most of the R candy. This is 65% potassium nitrate, 35% of confectioner sugar in this case. So as always, just start by getting the things that you don't need right out of your way. And the first thing that I do is I pluck out a piece of, or a strand of steel wool right out of the bundle there. And what I've done in this case is I've used my utility knife to uh, scrape off about three quarters of an inch to an inch of the last bit of the uh, igniter wire. And what I've done is I've made one side about two inches longer than the other. Uh, that's because your resistance wire ultimately is going to run between one side to the other. It's probably very hard to see here, but by the time we're done, we'll make sure you get a good view of it. And to prep the side that your power source connects to, you'll just want to strip it, again, three quarters of an inch to one inch to make sure your alligator clamps have something to attach on. And I use scissors to cut my resistance wire. And the first thing that you want to do before you go too far is you want to make sure that your wire actually has it, uh, sufficient resistance to make sure you have some power flow that can go through it. And all you need to do that is just wind it onto the ends that you've stripped clean and separated. The last thing that you want to do is not test the resistance on your wire, build an igniter, then get to the launch pad and watch absolutely nothing happen. Okay. Just give it a little bit of a twist. And with that, you'll want to grab your power source. I've just used the base unit or the battery power for my, from my cordless drill. And what you want to watch for is that this strand of wire, the resistance wire, is going to glow and disintegrate. And that's actually how your, how your, your igniter initiates burn of the Bates grains inside of your motor. So with that, uh, you've got a little sparkle there. And I, don't, I, I know people who do use just one strand. I don't feel comfortable with that. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've pre-made a couple strands. Uh, what I do is I, I pluck out three three strands from my bundle of steel wool there wool here and I just I just weave them together. The end result, if you can see it, is going to be something that looks very much like this. And I'll put it against the white background, maybe you can see it better. That's uh, three strands, not braided, but definitely wound together. And that will give the metal uh, resistance wire plenty of mass to actually heat up and provide sufficient ignition for your chemical mix. So once that's done, is you are going to grab whatever wire that you have prepared. Uh, you'll notice I am switching wires. Uh, I'm doing that purposely. Uh, the ignition wire that I like to use is uh, much more rugged and I believe will stand up for the use of several motors. Uh, also, the wire that I just used that example on has uh, ignited more than one motor and it's starting to just disintegrate a little bit. It does provide resistance, but the one time it does not, I don't want it to be on the launch pad. So uh, take a few moments, prep your wire, take part of your, the top part of your resistance wire, and just twist it. So you have them wound across each other like so, and then make sure the other ends of your wire are also separated. And then I, I try to lay it down really as flat as possible. It's not going to be absolutely perfect, 
but that's just the nature of things that are, are scratch built. So might help if you bend your, your strands down a little little outward and pull it straight again, straight as possible, and just twist them together. All this is doing is just making sure that you've actually made contact and when the electricity flows through that it's going to flow through the bottom one and the top one and when the current meets in the middle you get that nice bright glow that you saw previously. So that's it for that part. Uh, at this point you now have your igniter wire, you have your resistance wire uh, interwoven into it and then it's time to actually place it into the straw. So my recommendation is if you have a two inch Bates grain, for example, just cut it at roughly three inches. That gives you a time and a half because you want plenty of igniter powder on this. There's no reason not to go for a uh, instantaneous ignition. Use your tape measure to cut it. I have a hot melt glue gun and that is what I use. I just slide the igniter up into the straw, making sure all the exposed edges are actually in there. And then what I do is I just put a good shot of glue into the bottom part of the igniter. That just holds it in place. Like so. You're going to give that a couple seconds to cool and you might even manipulate this a little bit and move it around and give it another shot in the in the open gap. This by the way you can accomplish the same objective by just using duct tape just to seal that igniter mix into. So there we have the bottom part all set up and ready to go. The next thing I'm going to do is give my igniter mix a good shake. I've already done this. Um, this igniter mix, when it's around for long enough, will start to, to ball up. And you want to make sure you're putting down uh, as much of a powder as possible. Uh, for a couple reasons. If you use only one strand when you try to pack this powder into the sipping straw, it can break the resistance wire. That happened to me once. Very, very frustrating. And the other is just for ease of use. So when you're at this point, all you're doing now is you're you're just you're just feeding the straw. And just give it a tamp, flick it a little bit, because what you want is you want your resistance wire completely covered by this igniter mix. And when you're about halfway, halfway to filling up your sipping straw what you'll want to do is grab your uh, little packing tool and then tamp it down. It'll give you a nice pop upon ignition and uh, I think it'll give you a better ignition at that. And if you do find yourself a little ball of gummed up igniter mix, you can just give it a squeeze, it'll break. Almost there. Just kind of work it a little bit. Tamp it down. I have watched, by the way, uh, relatively weak igniters start a big motor before, and they take some time to power up. I don't, I don't like that. I, my own motors, I've seen they, they basically they don't power up. Nothing that's visible. There's a pop that you hear, and then you have a fully pressurized chamber, and that's. That's what the goal that I like to shoot for. And 
And once you're satisfied that you have a good amount of igniter powder in there and you've taken a little time to, to kind of pack it in, give it one last little bit. You might want to leave just over an eighth of an inch or so on top of the straw, a little space. You want to put, have something to put your glue down into. Now when you've got this much igniter mix, it doesn't matter that you're putting hot melt glue on top of it. It's not going to um, inhibit the ignition in any way. It's going to be absolutely fine. Get your igniter mix out of the way. Uh, something I, I failed to actually mention at this point is when you've when you've made the chemical mix for either your Bates grains or for your igniter, uh, that powdery form of the potassium nitrate and the powdered sugar is extremely volatile. Uh, you want to be as safety conscious as possible because that I consider that to be in its most dangerous state. Um, if you were to get that sparked or to, to drop some sort of a flame into that uh, you would without a doubt you would have a huge fireball and we obviously don't want that inside of a house or outside of a house rocketry is is based upon personal responsibility i believe and and uh, we we don't want variables like that take some time take some caution keep yourself and everybody around you safe so we're at the point now where we're just going to cap this off we have plenty of igniter powder in that and I know that when we do this on the test bench here in a few seconds or a few minutes rather we're going to have an igniter that really goes pop and it's it's going to completely burn away all this plastic material from the straw and leave probably somewhat of a residue but uh, in low light conditions you can see it burns very bright very hot and it is more than enough to get a high power rocket off the ground so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take some time to, to pause the video. Last thing I'm going to mention is you want your igniter to be able to easily move in and out of your nozzle. And that's obviously something you would look at before you consider igniter construction. And the reason for that is you don't want your igniter to uh, go pop and then be pushed down into the nozzle and clog the nozzle and actually have, have a Bates grain motor blowing up on you because there's no place for the gases to escape. This does burn at 1,000 degrees, just like the motor itself, but it's, um, it's not an instantaneous disintegration. And so you want plenty of room for that to come out. This is a 5 16 inch nozzle. The straw is obviously just a little bit, a little bit smaller than that. So that's it for now. We'll restart the video during the actual igniter test, and, um, and we'll move on there. We're actually getting very, very close to our launch date. We have the airframe uh, to construct. We have the piston uh, ejection system and a nose cone to make, and then, then we're done. It's, it's launch day at that point. So again, hope you enjoy. Uh, the second part of this little tutorial is coming right up. Okay, here we are. We're gonna give this uh, igniter just a quick little uh, test run here. Uh, we have our power source, which is our battery. We have the igniter that we made earlier today, and I've just uh, kind of created a safe little place here to test this, but uh, let's give it a whirl, see how it looks. All right, and there you have it. Of course, when that is actually inside of a motor casing, uh, you'll, you'll probably hear that little pop if you're close enough to it, but that um, under pressure, that disintegrates much, much, much more quickly. So uh, enjoy, and we'll move on next, I believe, to the uh, parachute ej ejection system.